The running time of Mozart's opera, The Magic Flute, is, without intermission, about two and a half hours long. So why do so many people come to it just to see a very specific three minutes? We're going to talk about the Queen of the Night aria today on Casey Does Classical. Mozart wrote this opera in 1791. It actually premiered only a couple months before he died. To get more context into who the Queen of the Night really was, we need to know about the actual plot of the Magic Flute, the enormous plot of the Magic Flute. So I have for you now a hastily compiled synopsis. Hastily compiled synopsis. Our heroes are a ragtag team of a prince named Tamino and his bird catcher friend, Papa Gano. Near the beginning of the opera, Tamino is gifted with, you guessed it, a magic flute. Tamino learns that beautiful Pamina has been captured by the evil Sarastro, and they set off on a quest to save her. Pamina happens to be the daughter of the Queen of the Night. When they meet Sarastro, it turns out he's less of an evildoer and more a leader of an opera version of the Freemasons. He puts Tamino and Papageno through a set of trials to achieve enlightenment. Pamina also thinks this free-thinking brotherhood seems nice, but when she tells her mother about it, we get the aria that we're talking about today, in which the queen orders her daughter with very high pitches to kill Sarastro so she can have the temple that was supposedly rightfully hers, and she'll disown her if she doesn't. But Sarastro is so cool that she can't do it. Tamino and Papageno pass the tests and are united with Pamina and Papageno's soulmate Papagena, and they rejoice at everything being awesome. Now that you're up to speed, we can talk a little bit more about the background of this particular aria. It was reported that Mozart evidently wrote this for his sister-in-law. Her name was Josefa Hofer, and she apparently had an enormous high, high range for an operatic soprano, which is why he wrote all these very extremely high notes that you don't hear in opera that often. The text of the title literally translates into Hell's Vengeance. It's a very, very angry, very furious kind of aria. And so the challenge for the singer comes in singing these high notes, which naturally sound very, very bright and trying to make them sound angry and furious. So how high does she have to sing exactly? Well, the highest note that she has to hit in the whole aria, which she has to hit a few times is a very, very high F. Uh, for those of you who read music, it's the F that's several ledger lines above the treble clef staff, not the one that is the top note, the top line on the treble clef staff. So let's do a little experiment here. I'm going to ask you to sing. Don't worry, I can't hear you. That right there is an F. That's the closest F to middle C. Let's start with that. La. It's an F that for most people is pretty comfortable. Let's go an octave above that. That's an uncomfortable one for me. I have a low choir voice though, so I wouldn't be able to naturally reach that one anyway. The F that the soprano, the queen of the night has to hit is an octave above that one. That's the one. If you try and hit that, you might hurt your throat just a little bit. So, she gets up there via an arpeggio. Not only does she have to sing this very, very pointedly accurate thing up there with really, really short notes, the orchestra is playing almost nothing. So she's very, very exposed, very naked up there. If she hits the note even the slightest bit out of tune, you're going to be able to tell. And what's more that makes this even a more challenging aria is, as I said before, this is full of anger and passion and the need for vengeance. How can a soprano really make that kind of bright arpeggio sound so angry? The link I've included here and in these episode notes are of Diana Dumbrow. And if you search YouTube, it's doubtful that you'll find someone who is not only as accurate, but as anger filled as she is with her performance. It's fantastic to watch. It's equally frightening and entertaining. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for joining me. This has been Casey Does Classical.
Mozart wrote this opera in 1791. It actually premiered only a couple months before he died. Hello. 